Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. Uh, it's a few minutes early, so uh, I'm still doing some setup. Sorry, I don't have any music today, uh, but I'll uh, I'll share my screen. You can see. <laughs> well, there's not much to see, I guess. Huh? There, how about that? Isn't that beautiful? Okay, and I'm gonna. I got a new computer, and the 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 camera is really wide screen, so you can see a lot of the background. I need to clean up my mess just a little bit. I'll be right back. Uh, how's that? Mo better? I'm going to. Uh... A mm, little bit. Nice. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Uh, we got just a couple more minutes. Uh, I'm still getting set up here. I've got another computer over here. I thought maybe a two computer setup would work a little better, but <coughs> excuse me. I'm all thumbs. Uh, so I need to go back to this. Okay, there we go. So how you doing? And if you can hear me, can you hear me okay? So I'm gonna kill this. It's a, uh, it's a starting time now. So I'm going to cancel that. Hey there. How you doing? Uh, welcome to the, welcome to the standard operating procedure. Cafe Tele's live broadcast. I do this every Sunday at this time, uh, 5 PM UTC. Uh, myself, I'm in Denver, Colorado, USA. It's uh, 10 AM here. And, um, Pretty set up. Today we're going to walk through some changes to the, we're going to start with, well, a, the technique that we worked on last week, where we very quickly created a busy hour type of spreadsheet. We're going to do something a little like that this week as a starting point. My idea is that uh, as, as telecom engineers, 
it's typical we start our day we come in and we generate a report maybe we you know we've got a pre a canned export from the uh from the OSS the vendor OSS or maybe there's another system and we take that export and we import in it into excel probably and i call that the morning report maybe you you know you you get into the office you start the export from the OSS and then you go get your tea or coffee and when you come back to your desk it's it's pretty much it's almost ready for action maybe you have to import that data into your excel spreadsheet yeah um what we're going to talk about today is how to make that data a little more useful and i'm going to show you a a a, a report like that that a friend sent me uh, one of my students sent it to me and i like it because it's really one of the best i've ever seen um there's <laughs> Well, we're going to talk about that some more. Um, let's see. Well, let's have a sip of our tea or coffee. Oh, yeah. And um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and pop up. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Hey, Nishant, how you doing? Good, mo good morning. Good afternoon. Where, where are you, Nishant? And there's uh, seems like there's four people logged in. Hey, everybody. Um, let me know where you're at. I see a lot of the purple from my shirt in my face. I wonder if I should see a doctor. <laughs> All right, Nishant. Thanks. You're in India. Great. Uh, are you a telecom engineer, Nishant? doesn't matter. These are really Excel techniques that are somewhat independent of telecom. Um, but, you know, you've heard me talk about this. If you've ever been on my other webinars, I've talked about this before that we're telecom engineers. We don't care anything about Excel. But Excel is a pretty fundamental tool for telecom. And we we use Excel to do better telecoms. And using a fundamental tool better, using a fundamental tool more appropriately will let us do better telecoms. It kind of, if we use Excel correctly, it gets out of the way and allows us to do better telecom. So this is my 15th live broadcast. And every time I talk about Excel, because I do see it as a fundamental tool and at the same time, I've almost never seen a telecom engineer who has done much work to be capable, proficient using Excel. Most of us, we, we hate Excel. I think the word I'd use is disdain. We just totally disdain Excel because there's no telecom in Excel. But again, it's, it's just such a fundamental tool that if we can learn how to use it a little bit better, will do better telecoms. And I know no telecom, I've never met a telecom engineer that wanted to be an Excel expert. And I don't want to be an Excel expert. And I'm not going to teach you how to be an Excel expert. But because it's a fundamental tool, I want you to know how to use it a little bit better so that your telecoms gets better. All right. So Mohit, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here and we'll get started. Um, let's see. I'm going to share the entire screen. I hope that's, it's really big. It's a big screen. So let's see, see how that works. And at first you're just going to see me, but this is what I want you to see. Not that one, this one, I guess I better hide that one behind and I'll make this a little bit bigger. And uh, I'm also going to bring that so I can see the chat over here while I'm working. Okay, there you go. So with this setup, um, I can see this is my Excel workbook in front of me. And then I can see the chat over here. Um, if you type a message, I should be able to see it. And pardon me if I don't get back to you right away. Maybe I, I didn't see it, but I'll try and keep it like this. Um, so this is a... Uh, 
as I said, this is a workbook, a, a, a report that one of my students sent me. And I'm showing it to you because this is one of the best I've ever seen. Um, he has actually a sheet that's called the dashboard. And it's essentially what I talked about. Excuse me. He has set up an export out of his, uh, it's primarily HSS data. And he set up an export and he imports it into this workbook. And he uses a lot of pivot tables, which is the approach I advocate. And this, the, the pivot tables are linked to these charts. And that's pretty terrific. That's, a, that's better than most of what I've seen people do. Mostly what I see is people will take that export from their OSS, they'll paste it into an Excel workbook, and then they'll start creating their uh, charts. And um, because we do it every day, it's recurring, we should find a way to make that daily activity as easy as possible. And if you've sit, sit on, if you've been on some of my other webinars, I always advocate for a two step process. One, bring in the new data. And I, I say that in a special way because there's lots of ways to do that. So step one is to bring in the new data, which could be you type it in, you copy it and paste it from an external source. You import it like a CSV or like from your OSS, or maybe you've even got a link to some other tool uh, that does an SQL query. It doesn't matter where that data comes from, but step one is bring in the new data for today or this week or this month. That's step one. Step two is refresh your pivot tables. So there's general, like in this case, you can see here on screen, two, four, six, eight, there's 10, 10, 12, uh, sorry, 11, 11 different charts. And they're all tied to the pivot tables. If you do this properly, you bring in the new data, refresh those pivot tables, and then you're done. All these charts will update automatically. Now, he hasn't done that in that way. What he's done, though, is brought in the new data, and then he set up all his pivot tables in these charts. The next way to improve that is make it automatic so that new data you just put in when you refresh the pivot tables, that new data will show up in these charts. Right now it's fixed. And um, normally you wanna set that up so you just bring in the new data and refresh your pivot tables and everything updates to show the latest data, this newest data that you've just added. Okay, that's the two-step process I always advocate for. So today what we're gonna do, I call this highlighting anomalies. So again, you come in in the morning, you get your OSS data, and you know, you're know you probably looking at what happened yesterday, right? You import the OSS data and you wanna see what happened yesterday. Well, in a chart like we're seeing on screen right now, it might be there, but it's all buried, right? I mean, what this is, you can see day by day everything, but we should be able to add a little more intelligence so that the process that most of us do now in our brains to try and identify those anomalies, like for example, let's say you manage a cluster of sites. Nishant, you're on the optimization team. You might have a cluster or a list of uh, BTS or enode Bs that are, that are yours, right? you would want to import data from those sites, refresh your pivot tables, and you'd want to see, you want your report to show you exactly what's broken. You know, what's the worst two or three sectors or what's the, you know, the, the highest drop call rate or the anything that's anomalous, anything that's out of the ordinary, you'd want your report to highlight that. So that's what we're going to try and show you today. So, Let's go, I'm gonna change here. This is the source data. And as I said, this is all HSS data. Let me take a digression. Uh, Nishant or Mohit, if, you, if you'd like, you could send me your data. Send me your data and maybe next week, I'll do the same thing using your data. And don't, don't worry about sharing proprietary information. Um, there's nothing here, I think, that's proprietary. I promise not to give it to anybody else. I will show it on this video, but 
this is all right. This data, if it's OSS data, it changes every single day. So I don't think we're going to give away anything critical. Um, here's the data the guy sent me. Here's the identifier here in column D. You can see the label for Ida for a column D is Huawei HSS all map operations. Do you know anything about this guy's network? No, I don't think you do. So if you want to send me a bunch of your data, you know, a week or two weeks of data, a month of data, doesn't matter. And we'll do the same thing. We'll go through this together on next week's live broadcast and we'll use your data. I'm happy to do that. And then you'd have a basically during this, I'd pretty much set up the report that you'd want to have, I'd certainly show you the techniques. So back to this one. You can see he's exporting the data and every row has a timestamp. That's pretty good. If I scroll down here, you can see, so this is a week's worth of data. This is from July 10 to July 19th, roughly. Did I get that right? Uh, you can see it's 52,291 rows of data, right? And it's roughly... Um, a week's worth of data out of the HSS. So that's what we're going to work with today. And I always start, remember, let's let's start by doing uh, what we did last week, which was we made a, a time of day distribution of the data. So I'm going to start that way. And I'm going to start by putting a new column here. And this is just a, a, a time of day. And that's the hour function. I'm going to get the hour function from this field because that's the timestamp. And you can see it's uh, July 10th at oh, oh, midnight, effectively. So my hour is zero. Um, I always keep my headers like that. And for formula data, I always give them this purple color so I'll know. Boy, that didn't turn out very purple, did it? Let's try that one more time. There we go. And then I just double click on the, uh, sorry, let me expand this so you can see it better. There's 130%. Can you see that better? Better, yeah, okay. So now this little knot down in the lower right-hand corner of the selected cell, that's my fill handle. I'm just gonna double click that and it'll fill all the way down as long as there's data in the column next to. So that's column C, if I just double click and it's 52,000 rows, you saw it took a second, you know? So now I've got the hour. If I scroll down to the bottom, you can see the last hour of the day is eight. That's, that's in my data, it's eight, right? So 8 a.m. on July 19th. So now I've got that. So I'm gonna just create a sheet and I'll call this pivot time of day. Now, what you normally do, and if I show you, let me unhide a, uh, unhide, I think I'm gonna unhide UL. He's got a bunch of uh, hidden worksheets here, which is fine, you can do that. It just makes it a little less cluttered for somebody else to look at. But just, I unhide this and it's a pivot table. If I click in the pivot table, and I click up here in the pivot table analyze menu, I can look at change data source. You can see his data source for this pivot table is the source worksheet and then C1 to BM. He's got all the data. He highlighted all the data. Okay. So remember what we did last week. I created a dynamic named range for that. So I want to show you that now because that's one of the techniques that means every day when you paste data in, when you refresh the pivot table, the new data is included. In this case, the way he did it, his data is hard coded. C1 to BM52291. It's hard coded, right? So when we try and when we update our pivot tables, if I put in new data, I've got to change this. And that's an extra manual step. I don't want to have to do that. So we're going to do a dynamic name range. And it's really simple to do that. Here's my source data. Uh, formula. I'm going to open up what Excel calls the name manager and I'm going to create a new name. I use Mac so it's the Apple operating system. If you use Windows the name manager looks a little bit different but it's the same thing we're doing. I'm going to create a name. I'm going to be lazy. This worksheet is called source. I'm just going to call my data source. 
that's just a name. And now, uh, dynamic named range always uses the offset function. Here's the offset function. Five arguments to offset. First argument typically is the upper left-hand corner of the data range. It's just an anchor point to start with. Second argument is any rows that, you know, uh, rows away from your starting point, mostly for, in most purposes, it's always zero. Now, as you get more comfortable with us offset, you can find non-zero values here, but let's make it simple. For dynamic named ranges on this type of data, it's always that upper left-hand corner is the first argument. So that's C1 and zero. Zero is the rows offset, comma, zero is the columns offset. And then I said there's five arguments. There's the first three. The next two are how high, or in other words, how many rows is in our data. And this is the part we want to change automatically, right? So when we bring in new data, we'll just paste it at the bottom of the existing data, but we want this named range to include that. So you're familiar with the count function. It just counts the number of rows with numeric data in its argument, right? So we're gonna use the count function as this argument to the offset function. Here's how that works. And here's my data, column C. I'm just gonna click column C. So now there's my argument, my fourth argument, the height or the number of rows in my source data. And to make this really simple, I'm gonna do the same thing for my width, right? You see how I move my hand? Width is the number of columns. Well, you're gonna see here, I'm gonna add columns. Well, I don't wanna hard code the number of columns every time I add a column. I want this worksheet, this dynamic name range to change automatically, okay? So let's do the same thing, count. Only this time, all my headers, remember the count function will, it returns the count of cells that have numeric data in the argument. So the argument is column C, how many cells have numeric data? That's the count function. But my header row, column one, is not numeric data, it's text. It's just, call, it's just the column headers. But for that, we can use the count A function and it returns the count of cells that are not blank in its argument. The, the count or the number of cells in the argument that are not blank. Uh, sorry, and I'm gonna do, this time I'm just gonna click the row. So you can see that, can you see that okay on my screen? It says count A, left parenthesis, source is the worksheet, exclamation point, dollar sign one, the dollar sign just means it's anchored, dollar sign one, colon, dollar sign one. So that's just all of row one. And then I need to close out my offset function and I'll click the plus sign. So there's my, I can see the whole thing if I click that. There's my, well, you can't, not big enough, but that's the offset. and. You can see it's highlighted here. Can you see around the screen the dashed lines? I have to be a little careful. If I click, it'll overwrite what I've typed there. If I just do this, if I click inside now, same thing. See between column B and C the dashed lines? The name manager will highlight around all the data that is selected here. Well, I can see a problem already. I haven't selected column B, my time of day data. So my first argument is the upper left-hand corner. The simplest thing to do is just change that to be column B. So now it's B1, the source starts in B1. So you can see up there, column B, 
row one. That's the upper left-hand corner of my data. And then zero and zero is the row offset and column offset. That's the second and third argument. And then count is the number of rows with numeric data. And then count A is the number of columns with any data. And at this point, count works just fine, but count is, is not going to include the top row because that's not numeric data, it's text. So the simplest thing to do here, I'm going to add and make this the count A argument because that will count not only all the rows with numeric data, but also the header row. So if I go back and click the plus sign, it'll update that. And now click here, you can see column B is included in my data. So that is how you make a dynamic named range that covers all your source data. I'm going to click OK so that goes away. So now all the data on this workbook, I didn't scroll out to show you out to the final column because it's like 50 columns, but that works just fine. So click the upper left-hand corner. The second argument's a zero. The third argument's a zero. The fourth argument is the height in rows. Just use your count A function on one of these cells. And then the width in columns, use your count A function again on row one. Perfect. So now we've got a dynamic named range that includes this. Let's go back and now we're going to insert our pivot table. And very simply, the table, the data range, select the table or range, right? The data is source. That's the name of that dynamic named range. It's just a named range, right? It's a range of cells that we gave a name to. And it'll put it here on the existing worksheet. worksheet. So there you go. And the first data is my first column. So remember, that's the hour. So you can see I get all 24 hours. This is what we did last week, right? I'm spending way too much time on this from last week, but I want to make sure you get this. This is, again, for a fundamental tool, these are fundamental steps. You'll do this for all the data you're going to import from your OSS or whatever the data source is. And then the next thing would be, uh, what's the data? So I think for this purpose, I used uh, success rate of send routing info. It's just what I used. It doesn't matter. And you can see automatically, sorry, it's still at, I'm going to include the size here to 130. Easier to see? I, I upped the size to 130%. Rather than a count, I'm going to do an average. And I'll do the number as well. I'm not sure this is going to work. I'll just do the number. Yeah, it's okay. So now I've got my count for every hour. Here's the value, right? So what I wanted to show you, this is what you produce um, daily. Let's, uh, I'm going to say hour. And then... Uh, That's the uh, data. So to make a chart, and remember I told you last week ah, that it automatically expands. It's there. So I'm just going to link to my hours. And then my send routing info, we did this last week, hit the equal sign and click inside the pivot table. And you get this very ugly looking, I can't make that any bigger. Uh, yes, I can. You get that when you click equal and then click inside a pivot table. If I make the equal sign, delete the equal sign, now you'll see that. There's the get pivot data function. And what I want to do is the TOD, TOD, right? After the first two arguments, this is basically uh, attribute value pairs, uh, comma separated rather than an equal sign. I want to change that zero to, to be um, 
to use this column here. And now if I fill down this column and I always make those purple, right? if I fill down this column, I get my hours, right? If I fill down this column, it's looking at, So you can see it's just the same values, but now it charts up really easily. Insert a chart. I want a column chart. And Excel tries to help here, but these blue bars, that's just the hour of the day. We don't want to see that. So there's the daily distribution of my send routing info. There's the daily abuse, daily abuse distribution of my send routing info. Now, I agree that doesn't look very helpful. Normally, we'd expect something well, like I showed you last week, um, you know, that smooth. I can open that up. Let me. Last week's. I think it's here. There we go. Uh, did I not? Uh, okay, it's not there. It's in the other one. Sorry about that. This is the actual one I did last week. And it should show us this. So this is this is kind of what I think usually you're you're more accustomed to seeing. This is a typical distribution of data inside a mobile network. Low traffic during the during the you know the, the small hours of the night, and then high traffic. This would be your busy hour out here. Unfortunately, the data I'm using today doesn't conform to that. Um, but that's that's basically what we want. So that's pretty much what we did last week was being able to create a chart like this. Um, I'm just using my friend's data, so it's not quite what we are accustomed to seeing. We can still work with it, though. And I need to also look back at where I was. Uh, I wanted to highlight the anomalies. Yeah, there we go. So what I want to show, wrong one, is this is the average for all, ten, what is it, eight or nine days in my source data. That's something I think is helpful to you and easy to do is what's the distribution of data So let's do another pivot table because it's so easy. Now that we have that named range, it's really trivial to make a pivot table. Source, remember that was the name of our named range, includes all the data. And let's say I just want to look at the distribu distribution of data. Well, by hour, I already know from this one, I have from zero to 23. How about, how would I know how, what's the days in my data? Well, we don't have that, right? I mean, we have this raw data. So let's insert a new table. Also, sorry, insert a new field, a new synthetic field. And this would be uh, days. And the formula is date, year. And that's uh, D2, month, D2. I'm doing it this way. May seem like a long circuitous route, but I want to eliminate all the hours and minutes and seconds throughout the day. So month is D2, 
I close that out. And day, E2. I double click, that'll fill all the way down. Okay. Now, if I come back to my pivot table, I have to refresh it because I just changed it, right? I added a new column. And now I want days. Now I can drop the days here. And I don't need to chart anything. Now I can see the distribution of my data. I have data on the 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th. Okay, so now I can, at a glance, I can see what data is included, right? Another way something else I could do is, well, okay, how time of day, we can add that. Now we need to add some data. How about we drop the time in there? And you can see, yeah, I've got 210 timestamp, some time samples every hour of every day, which is kind of what you'd expect, right? Except it ends in the 7 o'clock hour on the 20th. So right here is a very quick way to see what data is available to you. Okay, that was kind of a sidebar. Data distribution, because of that dynamic named range for pivot table that I showed you that we use as our pivot table source, it's really easy to set up a pivot table now. All of our pivot tables use the same source data, so it's really easy to work with. So this was our, this is what we created, and now where we were to start I want to get, how can I do both? Uh, there we go. I want to show this Excel work, worksheet and still see the chat. So what I want to do is let me insert a couple columns here. Um, we talked about a morning report where you can see today's data. You know, you come in, you import the workbook. Yeah. You import the data from your OSS. And you want to see how does today look? Well, if this is how the varies average over a bunch of days, I could compare this day to that long-term average and just show the delta for this day with the long-term average, right? How would I do that? Well, here's today's data. I got to back up. I usually create a worksheet called config. And I put the the latest date. I create a named range called latest date. And it's just the, the latest date is the maximum value in my workbook, maximum value for the date. Now, if I use timestamp, it's going to give me the maximum value, including the hour. And I just really want what's the latest day. So I'm going to use column C because that's just showing the day, month, year, no hours, minutes, seconds. And that's just the max function. Source column C, right? And I need to format that to be a date. I will. There's my date. That's the format I always like. Uh, so July 20th is the maximum date we have in our data. You know, I know though, because of our distribution, I can see that the max date, the 20th, isn't complete. We're not going to get good data. We're not going to get a full 24 hour data. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to say it's the max minus one. That'll give me the 19th. It's a cheat. I admit it. Please don't be mad at me. So now if we come back here, and this is uh, latest date. That's the, the 
the numeric format, I want to make it a date. Uh, uh, again, I have to, I can't, yes, I can. Format, just like we did before, date here. So on the 19th, what's the data? Well, it's, now we have to kind of tweak this a little bit. Now I need, I want to show the data by hour for the 19th. I don't have that data right now. I have the average for all the days in this pivot table. So I need a new pivot table. But that's so easy to do. Source on this worksheet. And I want to have days up here. Uh, hours, yeah, T of day down here, right? And this is uh, send, was it send resource info? Send, uh, rate of send routing info, success rate of send route, it's this one. That's the count. I want the average by hour for each hour of the day. Yay. And now if I click uh, here, click down in here, right? There's my get pivot data. But you can see up here, the date is July 12th. I want the date to be here. And the hour is here. I'm just going to link to these external sources. Here's my hour. Better format that just a little bit. There we go. So here's how I can get Here's how for this value, this is the average value for this, for this KPI on the 19th of July. Hi there, sorry about that. <laughs> Are you still with me? I don't know why that closed. Let's uh, go back to Sharon. Apologize for the inconvenience. I don't know what happened. Nishana, yeah, Hash Hashim, thank you. <laughs> it's good to be back, Hashim. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to share again, and I'm sorry, I'm not exactly sure where I lost you, so um, I'm going to probably have to cover a bit. Nishan, thanks for sticking with me. I don't know why that happened. Uh, I'm going to share that spreadsheet again. And I'm going to close this one. Although I do like that nice time of day distribution. The distribution here in this workbook is not very good. It's not, uh, it's not really, it's, it's hard for us to look at because that other one is so typical what we see. So what I did was um, I created a new pivot table uh, with the same data source we've been using, that source. You can see it here in the box that's moving around. That's the named range that we created, the dynamic named range. And then I, I just dropped the TOD field into the rows area. I dropped the days field into the columns area. And then I just same KPI, uh, success of send routing info. Yeah. Success rate of send routing info. And then I got it for the 19th. And here's that data. But what I really want is I don't really want to show that data. I just want to show the delta. So to make this simple, I'm just going to divide this by this one. and then multiply by 100.
let me fill that down. And then I'll add that to this chart. I'll make this chart bigger so it's a little bit easier to see. So this is the same chart we've been using. It's selected, so I'm going to uh, chart design, select data. I'm going to add There's my, and here's my data. And the time of day, it's same as it was before, right? Easy to do. And that should do it. Well, that's not exactly what I want because I want to see the delta only, right? So what I need to do is let's take this one. And uh, what is, what's the formula? It's going to be one minus this one over that one. Yeah. So it's one minus this. Sorry. I've, I don't need to multiply it by a hundred. Well, he did. Oh, okay. Yeah. If I come back to my data, I don't really need to see this anymore. That was the original data. Yeah. So what I want is just the Delta. This shows me how the data on July 19th differed from my long-term average. Let's do that again. Um, I'm going to insert. Oh, God. New computer, not everything works the way I want it to. So I can chart this again, right? Easily done. Insert, chart, column chart, delete the hours. So here's the long-term average of this KPI throughout the day. This is the average over, what did we have? Nine days, right? This chart shows us how the average, how today's values or the most recent day's values changed from the long-term average, right? So you come to work in the morning, import your data, refresh your pivot tables, and now it shows you simply the difference between this and the long-term average. So what can we do? What can we say about this, right? Let's, let's push back and say, how is this helping us? And yes, I know it would be a lot more helpful if I was looking at a KPI you guys use all the time. Um, but what we can see here is it's only going to show us, you could probably even, you know, we could improve this further by how about if the uh, how about the hourly delta? Right. So this is in percentage. I could make it percentage because it's correct. So it's showing percentage. You know what? If it only differs by, let's say, just to have an example, 3%, ignore it, right? If you were looking at dropped handoffs, for example, and your day, your delta, the hourly delta was only 3%, you know, that's probably an acceptable variability. Maybe it was raining that day or, um, you know, the, it was windy and a tree was blowing in the, in the path and it was messing with your loss, right? So you could ignore, let's say, well, I always put this on config, right? So uh, threshold ignore. I could set up a value and it's, let's say it's 0 0.3, it's 3%, right? 0 0.03. It'll be helpful if I type it correctly. Threshold ignore, right? Okay, 
and we'll format that so it says 3%. I'm sure we're going to have a problem if I try and chart this now. It is uh, I want the absolute value of the delta. So, right, so if, if it's less than if it's less than 3% or I only want to show it if the de difference is less than 3%, no, more than 3% or less than minus 3%, right? Because it's either side of zero. Well, uh, it's this. If absolute, I never use the absolute. <laughs> if the absolute value of that is less than my threshold, less than or equal to my threshold, threshold ignore, show a zero. If the absolute value got that comma zero, else show that. Sorry, this isn't coming out very well. Well, I didn't do that right. <laughs> if the absolute value is less than or equal to the threshold ignore three, show a zero, and they were all less. So what's my threshold ignore? 3%. I have some that's like that one. I'm not very good with absolute value. Okay, let's just get rid of the absolute because it's confusing me. If I think I left that in there. If that show a zero, else, boy, it's hard to read formulas in Excel. Huh? I think that should be okay. Why is I'm not doing that well? If it's less than the threshold. Oh, oh. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't. I admit I'm winging this now. I didn't practice this one, but it occurred to me while we're talking about this. Uh, how about the or function? Or if this is less than threshold ignore. Or if this is greater than if it's greater than the negative. That's my OR function. Did I turn that around? Have I got that backwards? If it's less than that, ignore it. Or this is less than. No, I think it's right. Hmm. All right. Too much. I'm going to, I'm just confusing myself and probably you too. The key things here, I think that we ought to take away is that let's undo this. The key things we ought to take away is use your report to show you the important things. 
rather than forcing you to look at a report like this and find the important and valuable changes, add get Excel to do some of that for you. So we've already talked about by using the dynamic named range on the source, Excel will automatically include data you add every day. That's an automation that saves your time. If you can chart up that so that this chart changes, so this chart changes, these charts change whenever you in that new data, that's also valuable, right? And then the third step that I've just been trying to show you is try to get Excel to show you the stuff that you need to focus on. So back to this chart, I don't really need to be concerned about some of this, but this stuff where it's significantly, it varies a lot from the average, that's something you can do. And if I was more clever, I could figure out how to show, you know, I would, I would hide anything that's less than 3%. Don't worry about it. But anything that's more than 3%, I'm curious about that. So like in your network, if you're dropped handover rate, maybe it's, you know, you might say it's 10%. That much is your normal variability. But if you have one, you know, during one day or one site even, not even time of day, but one site is 50% difference than its long-term average, you know, there's a problem with that site. Something happened. Either a parameter got changed or, you know, somebody parked a, a big truck in front of your antenna or the antenna broke and the, it, you know, the mount broke and it's hanging, you know, a big change like that. You'd want to get Excel to highlight that for you. Does that make sense? Let me kill my Sharon. What do you guys think? Does that make sense for you? I, I'm sorry that I didn't get the uh, building that threshold, that absolute value in there. Sorry I didn't get that right. But do you understand the technique? Do you have any questions? Can I help with that technique a little bit? Like I said before, if you have data, if you have a workbook, send me your workbook. I'm happy to work on your data and show you these techniques on your data. And then when I'm done, I mean, I get a chance to, to show you how. When I'm done, I'll send you the workbook. You can, you know, it'll be very easy for you to incorporate that into your daily steps. For now, what I'd suggest is work on work on first that approach where bring in your daily data, define it with a dynamic named range so that all your pivot tables adjust every day as you get in that new data. And then the steps that you need to include so that all your charts take advantage of that you know, that's another day. I, I, I can't show you that really, really quickly. Yes, I can. So I always do this on my config worksheet, right? So if this is the latest date, and again, we're ignoring that last date that only had eight hours in it. But for daily data, you might want to chart, you know, always chart the last 10 days. And this is pretty easy, right? So the last Okay, Nishant, that's fine. Dynamic named range, it's a really important concept. You saw I created a couple new pivot tables and all I had to do was type in, remember the named range was source. Anytime I create a pivot table, I know source covers all my data. So let's say I wanna look at the last 10 days. Here's the last, here's 10, right? So what I want to do is I want to show this latest date plus the 10 days before that. And it's really easy, right? So latest date, remember that date function? Here's the year. And you do have to break it out like that. This is a little complicated. But the remember my date is uh, latest date, right? Then the month, same thing. Month is, I'm using a shortcut there, uh, function F3, pulls up this little dialog box. Sorry, I'm not sharing. I'm not sharing. Let me share that again really quickly. I'm typing here and I'm not sharing.
Okay, sorry. So here, if I want to show, let me finish this. Here's that shortcut function F3. It pulls up the name drain dialog box and there's not source latest date. So there is my date function and this one is, it will return to the latest date because I haven't made a change, right? 19, sorry. That's the latest date. But, yeah, it's hard to do this. I always practice these before because if if you don't, if, if I'm trying to show you and I don't practice it in advance, I miss stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So this is actually needs to begin at one, it needs to begin at zero because you want So here I have 11 dates from 0 to 10, right? But to get the day, I want to subtract this column. Remember, I'm trying to show you the date of the last 10 days of data. And now that I've got that minus in there, that's actually going to be 11 days. So these are the dates. Now, remember the way we set this up, that... This latest date, this will change every time I bring in new data. Because this changes automatically every time I bring in new data, these 10 dates will change every time I bring in new data. And now I would use these 10 dates as what you're going to chart. So if this is the date, imagine you were looking at this the busy hour. Here's your 10 dates, and this is just the date function subtracting away one. And, you know, the better way to do this is use the rows function. Uh, G5 anchored. Colon G5. Remember the rows function returns the value, the, ca the count of the number of rows in the argument. It's one row, right? So I really want the first one to be zero. So I subtract one. Now, there's my 10 days. And if this looks at that column, well, see, now you can see it for yourself. Just why not just to keep your worksheet simpler. Instead of linking external, just put your rows function right in there. So there's your date, right? And here was your KPI. I can go back to here in this one. Now, this will only be for one hour, but instead of looking at that hard-coded date, Here's my date. Now that's an error because there's no data for the 9th of July. But all of these, there's my value. That's for one hour. So now, because this is all linked, tomorrow morning when I come into the office and I pull the data out of the OSS, I import it into my workbook. This list of the last 10 days updates automatically. I refresh my pivot table and these values will update automatically. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's really the approach. That was an extra 10 minutes. I'm going to kill my screen. So again, I'm trying to get to a point where automation, we bring in the latest data and it really doesn't matter. Is it a daily report, hourly uh, monthly, weekly, quarterly, doesn't matter. We bring in that most recent data. That's a long way to say update. We update our workbook, right? Bring in the latest data. That's step one. Refresh the pivot tables and everything changes. All your graphs will update automatically. 
It'll save you lots of time. And think of it this way. Once you've got it working that way, if you decide, maybe you think one day and say, you know what? I don't want to display just the hourly changes. I want to show, if you think of some other way that you can enhance the value of that report to you, you can build that in and it'll be there every day. You do it once and now every day going forward, it's always like that. This is my idea of what I call a morning report is you come in the morning, import the new data, refresh the pivot tables, and now you kind of see what you need to work on, what problems have arisen since yesterday. And that's what you work on. Okay, let me give you a couple of couple of links here, uh, like to my, let's uh, see what I got. Oh, I closed that. Hang on. Stand by. I was going to share some links with you. I wanted to remind you that we have uh, coming up on Jan uh, January 16th, that's a Saturday, we have a guest expert coming. So there's our uh, next free, well, that's the only one that's scheduled now. I have a guest expert that's going to talk about millimeter wave. That's uh, Christophe Tichon, is a PhD. He's focused on uh, millimeter wave uh, propagation modeling. So check that out. There's the link. You can register. It's completely free. That will be a Saturday morning, though, so it's not exactly. It's still the same time, 5 p.m. UTC. Uh, let's see. You ask me for the YouTube group. Do I have that? Well, son of a gun. I had it. Okay, I'll get it. Stand by. YouTube. There we go. Yay. Here is the uh, YouTube group. Uh, what else did I want to show you? A couple more links here. I just got to get back to all. Let's see. Uh, oh, you can follow me or follow Cafe Tele on LinkedIn. So you can see when we're going to do these. I do this every Sunday at, at 5 p.m. UTC. So uh, I post it to LinkedIn. I post it to my Facebook group. I'll give you the Facebook group. You may already be in the Facebook group. Here's the Facebook group. This group, uh, last week we went over 30,000 members. I'm very happy about that. A pretty good group. Everybody's helping out. You know, I spend a lot of time uh, deleting the links to uh, Bitcoin and get rich quick working from home. But a lot of good telecom stuff there. So I hope you'll join the group. Uh, yeah, here is uh, if you want to get an email reminder when I do this. You can follow that link and I'll send you an email every time before I go live. Um, you can also get our weekly newsletter. That's all right. Let's see. There's the YouTube site. I had it after all. Uh, this is not working right now. I'm sorry, but I should have this fixed later today. We post all of our old webinars and our uh, free trainings and paid trainings. Also, we have paid courses uh, at that link courses.cafetele.com. It's broken right now, but I hope in just a few minutes I'll be able to fix that. If it doesn't work for you, try again tomorrow. Uh, very sorry about that. Um, I'm not going to say what caused that. Let's see. We've already done that. Yeah, I think we're good. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you got some value out of this. Um, let's see. If you are... I already did this, but yeah, that one. If you click on this link to get notified, I'm going to give it to you again. If you click that one, uh, in a it take me an hour or so. I'll uh, edit this video and post it to YouTube, but then I'll send out a link to it to anybody on that email list. And uh, I'll, I'll include this workbook so you can see what I've done. Okay. Thanks so much for joining me. That's it for today. Um, 
Apologize also for the sound. Uh, I'm in a new in a new flat, and um, the sound is kind of echoey. I've got some work to do yet, but we'll get that taken care of too. Um, I hope we'll see you next week. I hope you'll join us on the 16th for the guest expert, uh, Christoph Chichon, for the millimeter wave propagation modeling. And um, until then, um, yeah, I hope everything's good for you. Have a great new year. Take care. Bye-bye.